I don't, I basically don't think that's how autocrats or any global leader should, or at least does make decisions. To the contrary, I think what's actually more likely to happen is we're going to put Xi Jinping in a more likely position to go after Taiwan sooner because he knows that Russia's in his camp because they're in a more solid alliance with the United States. About it. Yeah. On, on Taiwan, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's mostly right. Now, my view is this is also another heresy that I, uh, I think have recently managed to cross last night, which is that I think our commitments to go to war in that situation or to at least even militarily engage in that situation should change if it's before or after we have semiconductor independence in this country. Well, yeah. I mean, I think so. Right? So I, mean, I, I, I agree with you completely. Yeah. But I, uh, um, for people who aren't following this, explain sure. what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So this is a you know long history here, but for historical circumstances that you know are long and, and unfortunate, we are dependent on a tiny island nation off the southeast coast of China for our entire modern way of life. Right? These lights wouldn't work. The phones in our pockets wouldn't work. These you know TV screens and cameras wouldn't work if it weren't for leading edge semiconductors that are manufactured by basically one company and a set of companies around them, TSMC on Taiwan, that power our entire modern way of life. That's just a hard fact. How we got here, it's a long story. I think it's sad that we are where we are, but we are where we are. <clears throat> China has two reasons to want to go for Taiwan. Okay, one is a nationalistic reason, which is that back in 1949, they had this complicated so war, Chiang Kai-shek, yeah, yeah. you know, went to Taiwan and claimed that that was actually where the real Republic of China was based. and. Mao Zedong said, no, 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 it's the Communist Party of China out of Beijing. And for the longest time, actually, the U.S. and the U.N. recognized actually the real China as being run out of Taipei. But at some point along the way, switched to saying, no, it's actually run out of Beijing. And so there's this nationalistic thing going on that's super complicated history over there. But there's a more modern motivation for Xi Jinping, which is, wait a minute. If I now have control over that island, I have control over the entire United States because I now have the economic leverage to get to a deal that the U.S. wouldn't have said yes to. And I think what Xi Jinping is going for is the basic deal where he says, I get to make your stuff as long as I get all of your IP and everything else in return. And right now, if he says that to the U.S., we're not going to go for that deal. But if he's squatting on the semiconductor supply chain, well, then that's how we ultimately get to parity, consummate the codependent relationship. And I think that's step one of a broader conquest of, of the modern West. How hard would it be to achieve, as you said, semiconductor independence in the United States? It's not going to be easy, but I'm confident that with focus, I can lead us there by the end of my first term in office. And my basic rule of thumb on this one, Tucker, is just to be very practical, looking at this from American interests. I do not consent to Xi Jinping holding an economic gun to our head and lording that over for the next hundred years of the future of the United States. But if we're no longer dependent on that tiny island nation, then I will not send our sons and daughters to die over somebody else's nationalistic dispute. How That's difficult what I'm is it to produce? I mean, it's, it's interesting. And you said there's yeah. a complex history that I'm not familiar with uh, behind it. But how complex is it to build your own semiconductor? It's complicated because a lot of it relies on know-how. So it's not just raw production capability, but it's the know-how of how you actually make it. And so I think that requires pulling people from, you know, DSMC in Taiwan to the United States. And I think that that's something that we should be intensely focused on right now. There's new, you know, giant projects, manufacturing projects in Arizona, near where I live, actually in my home state of Ohio, that are going to be steps forward in that direction. I also think that like it or not, a relationship with South Korea and Japan is going to have to play a role in speeding up our semiconductor self-reliance as well. Samsung is the next best leader. It's not even an American company. After TSMC, there's like a big jump down. Then it's Samsung. Then there's a big jump down. There's Intel and everybody else here. So I think that it's going to require, and I don't like multilateral trade agreements, but if we're going to have to do them, let's keep it bilateral. Bilateral agreements with Japan, with South Korea. That's a big part of what's going to be required. And so my view is, let's think about first term in office as it relates to this dimension of foreign policy and the Ukraine war on terms that help pull Russia out of China's hands. That's going to require rebuilding a lot of trust. I think I'm up for that job. And I believe that Putin can trust us to follow our self-interest as long as we trust him to follow his. Reopen economic relations with Russia, freeze the current lines of control, make a permanent commitment that NATO will not admit Ukraine to NATO. But in return, we can, if not disband that Russia-China alliance. I'd get India back on side. And, you know, if there's a guy who's going to 
rebuild trust with India, it better be a guy with the name Vivek Ramaswamy who might be up for that task. But, you know, getting India on, on side to say, you know what, we're going to be making sure that in a conflict situation in Taiwan, that we're at least on side with the United States. But then more importantly, get semiconductor self-sufficiency in the United States, reduce our economic dependence on China. If we're there by the end of my first term, by the end of 2028, the stakes are now just a lot lower with respect to what's actually happening in Taiwan. And if, you know, is it preferable for China to annex Taiwan even after that scenario? No, probably not. But that's a different bar for whether or not we're going to actually be willing to send our sons and daughters to die over it. And in the meantime, there's one aspect of our national defense that surprisingly nobody's talking about, Tucker, which is actually our national defense of the homeland, where we have actually badly missed the plot for super EMP attacks, cyber attacks, nuclear defense. You know, we help Israel build an iron dome. How about an equivalent of an iron dome for the United States and our own homeland? And so that's where I'm focused in my first term. If I, on foreign policy, if I can get us to semiconductor independence, if I can get us to significantly reduced, if not total economic independence from China, weaken the Russia-China alliance by ending the war in Ukraine, that actually keeps China at bay from not having an economic gun to our head over our modern way of life, at which point 